Well, happy Sabbath, brethren, and happy first day of Unleavened Bread. Welcome to any of our guests that are here, and welcome to all joining us via the web. Glad you're with us. When I was young, my family often drove to the Feast of Tabernacles. Seemed like a lot of those trips took us through roads where they would carve uh, the road right through the middle of some big hill or, or mountain. Often along these roads, there would be a sign that would say, beware of falling rocks. Now, I remember as a kid staring out the window, looking up at the rocks, just waiting for some monstrous boulder to come tumbling down toward our car. <coughs> the word beware is an important word. It tells us to pay attention, to be cautious about something. We see lots of types of beware signs. Beware of dog, beware of vehicles, beware of high voltage, Beware of shark-infested waters. As a kid, actually, I remember a sign of beware of jellyfish when we were down at the feast in Florida. Just tons of jellyfish in that particular area. Well, Christ told his disciples, beware on a number of occasions. Let's look at one and turn to Luke 12. And we'll look at one of those cases. Luke 12. And we'll start right in verse 1. Luke 12, 1 says, In the meantime, when an innumerable multitude of people had gathered together so that they trampled one another, he began to say to his disciples first, Beware of the leaven of the Pharisees, which is hypocrisy. Beware of the leaven of the Pharisees, which is hypocrisy. Today in this sermonette, we're going to look at Christians and hypocrisy. What is this leaven of the Pharisees? The Greek word here for hypocrisy is hypocrisis. Christ used it various times in its various forms, about 17 times in the Bible or so. Thayer's definition of this word talks about it being the acting of a stage player, someone who is acting or pretending. The word originally goes all the way back to Greek theater, where people would wear a mask to uh, hide the part they were playing on stage. They pretended to be someone different, sometimes even disguising their, their real voice. Christ often called the Pharisees hypocrites. These Pharisees of Christ's day were a powerful group of people, and they claimed to be more righteous, more zealous than even the other Jews, and certainly more than those godly or godless Gentile dogs. They held themselves up to the standard of what was right and godly behavior, yet Christ saw through this facade that they put up that it was simply an act, that inside, in their motivations and their thoughts, they didn't match what they were presenting on the outside, what they were showing everybody on the outside. Even while attempting to injure Christ and to trick him and trap him, they did it with deceptive questions and smiling faces. The Barnes commentary draws three similarities between leavening and hypocrisy. The first one they draw is that leavening may exist in a lump of dough and not immediately be known. And likewise, hypocrisy is the same way. We don't always immediately know when there's hypocrisy, that someone's pretending to be different than what they're showing on the outside. Two, it spreads. It gets in and soon leavening is pervasive, and this can be true individually in our own life, but this also can be true of a group. You know, people can, someone can start pretending and soon others start pretending and pretty soon the whole group's pretending to be uh, something that they're not, to put the mask on to try to fit in. And then three, finally, it swells, leavening swells. It puffs up. And people, it fills us with pride and vanity. Christ wanted us to live a life that was truth and sincerity not hiding behind a mask, not pretending to be a righteous person, but inside being something quite different. And Christ knew how much this, this leavening, this hypocrisy had infected uh, the Pharisees and others. And he didn't want his disciples and certainly us to be infected by that leavening either, this leavening of hypocrisy. It's a tendency when we talk about these type of topics in humans to want to look at others and shake our head and say, yep, I know hypocrites. I even know some in this room. But the fact is, yes, there will always be hypocrisy in the church. There will always be pretenders in the church. But instead of focusing on that and focusing on others, 
Let's today look inward at ourselves and try to identify where we may still have hypocrisy in us. Do we, at times, pretend to be something we aren't? Do we have thoughts and motivations on the inside that, or actions that, that take place behind closed doors that we wouldn't want to present here at church? Do we put on a mask sometimes so that we can be impressive, impress others, so that they will come to think highly of us and like us, like the person that we present on the outside, and hope that they, they come to think that that's who we really are? And maybe it's a no-duh statement to say that Christians should not be hypocrites. But Christ gave this warning for a purpose. Beware, because hypocrisy is a dangerous thing. Hypocrisy stunts our growth. Hypocrisy and Christianity oppose each other. As Christians, we come to see ourselves. We come to see ourselves as we truly are. As we prepared and took the Passover last night, hopefully we came to see how far off, not, not last night, night before last. <laughs> People were wondering about me. <laughs> hopefully we came to see ourselves as we truly are, to see how far we still had to go, how much we still had to grow to become like Christ, how and we realize that we're still very much guilty sinners who aren't worthy of the calling and God's blessings that he's given us that we commit real sins. As Christians, we shouldn't be trying to put up an illusion of godliness. We realize of ourselves, nothing good comes. We confess our sins. We realize that we individually, as Mr. Myers pointed out in our Passover service, that even if we were the only ones who sinned, we were responsible for the death of Jesus Christ. He would have still had to die for us. And because we realize these things, we throw ourselves on the mercy of God. Christianity is about pulling away the mask and admitting who we really are. And it's tempting, and I think it's tempting for all of us, that when we come to church and we see all these wonderful people, all these people that we come to love as our family, that we can be tempted to want to pretend that we're not sinners anymore, that we've got it all together and put on that mask of perfection. Let's continue to read here in, in Luke 12 and see what Christ went on to say after he warned of the leavening of hypocrisy. Verse 2, For there is nothing covered that will not be revealed, nor hidden that will not be known. Therefore, whatever you have spoken in the dark will be heard in the light, and what you have spoken in the ear in inner rooms. And that's kind of scary to think about all the things we've maybe spoken in the ear in inner rooms from times past. Will be proclaimed on the housetops. God sees it all. We can't behind, hide behind any mask with God. Verse 4, And I say to you, my friends, do not be afraid of those who can kill the body and after that have no more that they can do. Christ says we shouldn't be afraid of people. And isn't that part of the motivation of hypocrisy? Isn't there some amount of fear involved in that? Fear that someone might think lesser of us? Fear that somebody might talk about us, fear that maybe we won't be asked to serve in a particular way. And because of that fear, we can begin putting on that mask that we do no wrong. Verse 5, but I will show you whom to fear. Fear him who, after he has killed, has the power to cast into hell. The word for hell here, just worth noting, is the Hebrew, has a Hebrew origin talking about the valley of Gehenna. It's in a future eternal death. Yes, I say to you, fear him. And it's appropriate for us to have a proper fear and respect of God. He sees behind the mask. He knows what we are. And the Bible says that the fear of God is the beginning of wisdom and understanding and knowledge. We need to fear God. It's a part of growing and overcoming. Verse 8. But I also say to you, whoever confesses me, confesses me before men, him, the Son of Man, also will confess before the angels of God. In verse 9, but he who denies me before men will be denied before the angels of God. We know that and there's examples like Peter that denied Christ three times before the rooster crowed. He, didn't, he pretended not to know him, even saying, a curse on me if I'm lying. I swear I don't know this man. That's recorded in Mark 14. Peter was not yet converted. He didn't have the Holy Spirit in him. But have we ever been ashamed of what we believe? 
I know I can think back to especially times when I was a child, and I wanted to be like everyone else. And there were times I was very much afraid of being different. Let's go to another place that records a lot on hypocrisy. Let's go to Matthew 6, 1. Matthew 6, 1. Another set of scriptures that show some areas where we need to be careful not to be hypocritical. Actually, Mr. Porter spoke about the first part of this uh, recently in a sermonette in both the AM and PM. Matthew 6, 1 tells us, Do not do your charitable deeds before men to be seen by them. I'm going to kind of skip through this and and move kind of quickly just to bring out the highlights. Verse 2, when you do a charitable deed, do not sound a trumpet before you as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets, that they may have glory from men. Verse 5 tells us, and when you pray, don't be like the hypocrites. Why did they do it? To be seen. Verse 16, moreover, when you fast, do not be like the hypocrites with a sad countenance, for they disfigure their faces that they may appear to men to be fasting. They did all this to be seen. They wanted to appear as a a generous, praying, fasting individual. They wanted others in their minds to be thinking, wow, look how righteous that person is. Have we ever done anything to be seen? When we take out the trash back here at church, do we do it because that's the right thing to do and to help? Or do we do do it to be seen helping, to impress Those things we should constantly be examining. Verse 22, and this one, verse 22 might not necessarily jump out to us right away that it it deals with hypocrisy. Verse 22 says, the lamp of the body is the eye. Therefore, your eye is good. Your whole body will be full of light. But if your eye is bad, your whole body will be full of darkness. If therefore the light that is in you is darkness, how great is that darkness? What we allow into our minds becomes a part of who we are. Do we profess to be a Christian and then go home and have non-Christian conduct? Do we play video games, for, for an example, where we steal and kill? Do we talk about, with our friends here at church, how evil this terrible world is? All the violence and all the adultery and all, there's just so much evil. And then go home and we tune in and entertain and watch things where we find ourselves maybe rooting for this couple to get together and have sex outside of marriage, or maybe it's, it's rooting for this, this criminal to get away with stealing this, this big loot, this uh, elaborate heist to get away with it. And, and by the way, I mean, he's just stealing from other criminals, and so that, that makes it okay. Does that make us hypocrites? Does the entertainment choices that we choose reveal anything about what's on the inside of us? Maybe it's a good test to think about in regards to what we watch, what we play, you know, various actions we have. Would you then turn around and recommend that to someone in the church? Or even better yet, Mr. Myers. Would you sit down and want to watch that with Mr. Myers? He's our shepherd. Would you want him knowing that that's, that, and that's just a good barometer. It's a good test for us to be able to ask that question. And if the answer is, no, I wouldn't want to sit down with Mr. Myers and watch that movie I just watched, maybe that tells us something about that choice we just made. Jesus Christ was often patient with struggling sinners. He pointed them toward the goal, go and sin no more. But he also showed very little tolerance for those religious leaders who represented themselves as righteous, but inside were something different. They were pretending. Let's go to one final uh, verse in Matthew 23 and verse 25. Matthew 23 and verse 25. These are probably two scriptures we've read quite a bit, especially around this time. Matthew 23, 25 says, Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites! For you cleanse the outside of the cup and dish, but inside they're full of extortion and self-indulgence. Blind Pharisee! First cleanse the inside of the cup and dish, that the outside may also be clean also. Verse 27, what sorrow awaits you, teachers of religious law, and you Pharisees, hypocrites? For you are like whitewashed tombs, beautiful on the outside, but filled on the inside with dead people's bones and all sorts of impurity. Outwardly, you look like religious people, but inwardly, your hearts are filled with hypocrisy and lawlessness. 
Now, there are a number of areas in, that I think we could probably talk about today about our lives where we could look for hypocrisy. Maybe it's how we treat our coworkers at work. Maybe how we interact and talk with our children and our, our spouses behind closed doors. What we might call somebody while we're driving. How we handle alcohol. What we look at when we're on the internet how we talk about other people when we're with our closest friends. All of those things are worth giving some thought and consideration to. God knows these things already. There's no hiding it from him. We as Christians, we don't want to be pretenders. Are we the same on the inside as we are on the outside? Hypocrisy is dangerous, and we all can fall victim to it. Before we close, let's ask one more question. Since we all fail, since we all sin, does that make us all hypocrites? Does it make us hypocrites? Well, maybe. If we are complacent, if we're stagnant, if we ignore the sins that we know are in our lives and go about putting up the facade of being a good Christian, if, if it's all an act, if we're not working on that sin, then yes, we're hypocrites. But if we are fighting the good fight, if we're working, maybe even struggling, but fighting to grow and change, if we are admitting the wretched men and women that we are before God and pulling down that mask and repenting and changing, not trying to represent ourselves as more righteous than we are, then no, we're not hypocrites. We're just works in progress. Brethren, is Christianity at the root of who we are, or do we put on a mask and hide what we do behind closed doors? Does what we think, say, feel, and do when no one is looking align with what we claim to be when we put on our Sabbath best and come together? Let's heed Christ's warning. Let's beware of the leavening of hypocrisy. Let's be the same on the inside and out. Let's examine and identify in our lives where we may not be doing that, where the inside may not match the outside. And let's be courageous enough to admit those areas where we fall short make those needed changes, and work hard at being true, genuine Christians.